Hi, this is Veronica Henry. This demo on the Server Plus troubleshooting model is from my CompTIA Server Plus course. The first step in the CompTIA Server Plus troubleshooting model is to identify the problem and determine the scope. There are several ways to do this, and you begin by questioning your users and stakeholders. You'll first want to understand your customer or your user's environment, including where they're located, what platform they're using, or operating system. This will hopefully give you a clearer picture of what the issue is. Assuming you've gotten all the answers you need from the user, next you determine if the IT staff has made any changes to the server and or the network environment. Patches have been known to wreak havoc on the network, so this is always a good place to start. And at this next point, you want to review your log files or other documentation. You may have records of prior outages or issues that are related to the current one. And logs will tell you any problems that your network or even a specific application may have had. During the next step, you replicate the problem. The idea is to note and record any error messages you get or warnings. Usually, they'll point you right to the problem. Also note other symptoms or things that occurred at this time. This could be an error code, an audio code, or even a crash message. All will serve as clues to solve the problem. The last step in the identification stage is to perform a backup before you make any changes. Again, this will allow you an easy rollback in case something goes wrong. Now that we have gone through all the steps to help us identify the problem, it's time to establish a theory of probable cause. Many times the answer, or answers, will jump right out at you, usually based on prior experience. But to help with the discovery, here's what you should do. Question the obvious. Sometimes the most obvious answer isn't necessarily the right one. For example, you could assume that a problem accessing the internet means that a cable is broken. But in reality, there could be many causes. The point is to look beyond the obvious. Next, analyze the problem for potential causes. This is that step past the obvious. A network printer that isn't printing could be due to it being out of paper, or it could be something has maybe clogged up the print queue. The printer could even be out of toner. Just think of all the potential causes and then make an initial determination of the nature of the problem, whether it is hardware or software related. And if there are multiple problems, figure out if there is some commonality between them. Is there one or even two common elements in each of those issues? If the printer isn't working and the user can't get out to the network, that could indeed mean a wiring problem with her computer. So you can see how multiple problems may also help you narrow down the cause. The next phase is to test the theory to determine the cause. This is essentially where you test issues that are related to the problem. You'll probably want to check things like connections and even power. I have personally visited more than one computer where the computer had actually had the power cord disconnected by the overnight cleaning staff. So sometimes the answer is just that simple. You also want to check configurations and any status lights or indicators that could give you a clue as to what the problem is. Then you determine the next steps to take to solve the problem. And most importantly, if you cannot confirm your theory, try something else or escalate to the next level support. The next thing you will do is establish a plan of action to resolve the problem and notify impacted users. When establishing this plan of action, Include others as needed. This might be your peers, other network administrators, perhaps developers, managers. Basically, just include anybody that you deem necessary. Then you need to notify your users of any outages and the steps you'll take. For example, if the network needs to come down for a period of time, you want to make sure that you give people enough time to save their current work and log off and that the outage won't impact any other systems or cause any problems. And this is why you also need to include other people in your plan of action. And what you will provide is an estimated time of completion. 
And as we all probably know, this is definitely an estimate. So we're at the point where we're ready to take action. And the technical name for this step, according to CompTIA, is to implement the solution or escalate as appropriate. At this stage, what you're doing is actually working through your action plan, completing each step. Now be sure to make only one change at a time. This is because you have to test and confirm each step as you go and document the results of each step. If you're lucky, your first step will solve the problem, but more likely this won't be the case. So if a problem is not solved, reverse that change and try a new one, again documenting as you go. And if none of these solutions work, escalate again to the next level of support or even a vendor. Let's move on. Assuming we fixed the problem, now you should verify results and system functionality. And from there, you'll want to try to implement preventative measures if applicable. If there's something you can do to make sure the same problem doesn't pop up again, then you should definitely do it. This could involve a setting change, an upgrade, or a replacement. During this process, Again, engage your peers or vendors for support. Even if you're the sole network administrator, as I was at one point in my career, there's really no reason to go it alone anymore. You can also make use of your manuals. Many times we take these manuals and stuff them in a box or put them on a shelf and forget about them, when actually there's tons of information in there that can be used to help you troubleshoot your issues. So be sure to make use of those. And again, you want to implement your preventative measures only after your results have been verified. We'll take a look at the seventh phase next. Our next step is to perform what's called a root cause analysis. After you've verified your system's functionality, decide whether your solution resolved the root cause of the problem, as you originally documented it. Symptoms may just disappear temporarily, for instance, you may reboot the system and find that the problem wasn't really fixed. Or you may get a desperate call from the same user later on saying she's having the same issue. A root cause analysis should help you determine if you've really addressed the original problem. And up next, we have our last Server Plus troubleshooting method. The last step in the Server Plus troubleshooting model is a recurring theme that we've talked about over many lessons. Document your findings actions, and outcomes. And actually, you should do this throughout the process. Actions could include a replacement part, an updated driver, or it could be as simple as giving the user instructions on how to properly use the system. Or it could even be all three of these things. And again, you have to document the outcome of each action for this to be effective. If you replace the cable and you still had the same issue, then you need to make note of that because then you'll know that this cable is actually still a good one, and maybe you'll put it in the good pile versus the tossed out pile. And if you updated a driver and then found that you still had the same issue, you may even want to roll back to the previous version of the driver. And it will be important to note that for other computers on your network, that perhaps making that update isn't really necessary. And the reason that you go through all of this work is that you need to maintain the documentation as a reference point for future issues that you may encounter, and also for other administrators that may in fact come after you. This is similar to the process of commenting and programming. Programmers are real sticklers about adding comments to your code so that if someone comes after you and needs to make changes, they understand your train of thought. And even for yourself, chances are you may have to pull up code that you completed maybe a year earlier and those comments will prove helpful to you as well. So it's the same thing with documentation. If you move on to another job and another administrator takes your place, then having these types of documents around will be really helpful for that person. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.